Hello and welcome to episode 44 of the chess.com rapid rating climb series. You all know the drill by now and we're going to just go straight into the game. Uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, in the description I've just put a brief explanation of what this series is about so that I don't repeat myself every single episode. Thank you for the commenter who commented that. And we have the Kara Khan defense. And I've said this before, White has a ton of options for what he can do here. I'd say these are the main six things that he can do. We've had a lot of exchange Karo Khans. Um, a couple episodes ago, we had an exchange Karo Khan. It was very, very interesting. Uh, not as boring as people tend to consider it. I'd say it's far more interesting than the exchange Slav, which is similar, except you have a bit of a pawn in balance because Black's missing a C pawn and White's missing an E pawn in the exchange Karo, compared to the exchange Slav, both sides missing a C pawn. It's just symmetrical, right? So our opponent plays the advanced variation. We're going to strike immediately with C5. Yes, I know I just played C6, then C5, but we effectively like play C6 so that we can play D5 to not force, but get our opponent to maybe play E5 and then try to undermine the d4 pawn, which is holding on to e5, because e5 can be very powerful, especially taking up f6, because that's the natural developing square for the knight. So we really want to try and win this pawn. So we just continue putting pressure on the center. White continues defending it. What is the next move? I mean, the next move isn't forced, but what would you play here? I would say bishop g4 is the most natural response because we want to go e6 to not only defend d5 but also have our bishop open up to defend c5 because currently if white takes like we can't actually take back yet immediately the pawn isn't really going to be lost we're going to win it back fairly easy easily white could try ideas like taking and going b5 but then e5 will probably become a bit too weak um but we want to go e6 you know to open up the bishop defend the pawn but we don't really want to block this bishop in if we can help it so we develop the bishop first with a pin on the knight which is protecting the center our opponent pins us because if we take and queen takes we might have been threatening to take here so now we're going to go e6 and now we are no longer gambiting the c5 pawn because we can always just take back with the bishop our bishop's nice and active our knight's good yeah he's pinning our knight but it's not really anything to be concerned about. We may go for moves like queen to b6, putting pressure on the bishop, the pawn, and maybe the b2 pawn if he moves his bishop off of the defense. Knight e7 looks like a logical move to me now. It does block our bishop, but if he takes knight g6, and we should have way too much pressure on all the pawns. Um... Queen b6 is a move that I want to play, but I want to wait until he develops his bishop somewhere, because I want b2 to be under threat. So I think knight g to e7 makes a lot of sense. This knight sometimes comes to f5 as well. If h3 is played, we're going to take, uh, just because like there's so much um, tension on the dart squares in the center. And this knight is obviously helping him to um, fight for the dark squares. So if we can take the knight and force the queen to take, so the queen and the knight both stop defending the light square, the dark squares, that's great. But I'd like to do it if I'm prompted to. We can continue making improving moves, and knight f5 looks logical. And this is a classic square for the knight to go to in the Karokan and the French. Because the Karo does resemble the French in many ways, right? We have pawns on d5 and e6. Whites had played like an advanced French almost. And then we've struck with c5 to try and undermine his center. The difference is, we don't have a bishop on c8. We have a bishop on g4. Which is why I prefer the Karo Khan to the French. Now sometimes in the Karo, yeah, your bishop might end up just sitting on c8. And that's not ideal, maybe. But 
So, you know, you can actually transpose to a lot of French positions from the Caro, depending on how you play it. But I like the Caro because I feel like a lot of the lines that you go into are just better versions of the French. Some of them are basically the same, but a lot of them are just slightly better, in my opinion, anyway. I feel like the French can get quite risky, whereas the Caro is just a bit more solid and a bit more my play style. I think I'm more positionally inclined. At least um, I have become in the past year. And I think that was because I've started playing more over the board classical chess. Where tactical chess doesn't work quite as well. Because people have got forever to think. Right? So they're more likely to see the tactical moves. Whereas, you know, online in faster time controls. You can get away with just playing tactically. Because people don't have the time to consider everything. So... Bishop e3. Of course we can take. But we can take whenever we want. So why rush it? I did say I wanted to wait for this bishop to develop before I played queen b6. So that I could put pressure on b2. If he takes, that's fine. We're going to take back with the bishop. There's no knight coming to a4, a, a4 to fork my queen and bishop. Which is something you have to watch out for if you have like queen and bishop on c5 and b6. Or like c4 and b3. And like coming to a5. Um, and this bishop is going to be under attack. Looks pretty good to me. If he takes I'm probably going to take back with the pawn. Just so I can open up this b file for my rook. And if he takes obviously we're just going to take. So queen b6 looks good. Could I play bishop e7? Absolutely. That is a perfectly fine move. Also taking with the pawn. Just blocks off this diagonal. Okay. Now taking looks too risky. Because of rook b1. We actually had a Slav defense similar to this um, a few episodes ago. And I ended up taking and I ended up winning because of it. Wait. Wait. Yeah, yeah, I ended up winning because of it, like going for the potentially poisoned pawn. But it was not the right idea in the end. We could take. And if bishop takes, we can go c5 maybe. Or we could play on the pin. But if we take, then he's just going to take back with the pawn. And then this is going to become quite exposed. Now I don't mind that if we can castle first. So I'm proposing bishop e7 and castles. And then we can start playing on the queen side. If we go bishop e7 and he takes. Then yeah we are going to be forced to do this. And you can argue that we wasted a move. But if we go bishop e7 and takes. We could also consider knight takes e3. Because if he takes our queen then we take his queen. b7, rook b8, takes, takes. We end up with equal material. Hmm. That doesn't look terrible. Bishop b7 takes. Of course we could just take. And our knight's still very good. h3, we will have to take him. But because we have so many pawns on light squares, that's not a problem. c4 is a move to consider. Just to shut everything down. But then I feel like I'm handing him the pawn break with b3. And he can do that whenever he wants. So bishop e7 looks like the move. On knight b3, trying to target c5. Then I might play c4. Just because I'll have him waste a couple moves then. Uh, if knight b3, c4... He could come in to c5 anyway and go takes, takes. But then I feel secure in taking b2. Because his pawn structure is completely ruined. Rook b1, I can even probably take on a2. This pin exists and this knight is not defending the, the other knight because this knight's gone off on a journey. So if the queen moves, I can take and ruin the king's side pawn structure. This is looking good. This is looking good. Um, I don't think we need to commit to anything, really. Maybe rook b8 was better. It was a move that I considered. 
uh, on the previous turn. Just putting more pressure on B2. But the B2 pawn isn't really going anywhere. So I think I just want to get castled. I just want to get castled. And in the meantime, we can respond to anything he does. H3 we're going to take. Um, I don't see a reason not to. If we go back then G4. Yes, we can take like this then. With an attack on the queen. Rook takes, bishop back. Hmm, that is something to consider, but if bishop h5, he could take here, though, with an attack on the queen. Then if takes, 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 then g4 works. That looks very complicated, because there is ideas like bishop h5 takes, knight e3 takes, takes, b7, rook b8, takes, takes. I think we're just equal. But I feel like we can do better than equal. Okay, knight takes. He's got very nice control over this pawn now. So that's good for him. If he takes, again, we're just going to take with the bishop. B2 is a big weakness. And if he advances the B pawn, then the C pawn could become a problem. Or we could try and undermine his structure with like a5, a4. We can always take the bishop. G4 doesn't scare me because we can take the bishop. Or we can even go to h4, maybe. Um, h5 is a typical idea in these structures to try and control B4, g4 so that this knight is safe. If we castle, g4 we take the bishop. If he takes here first, then bishop takes and g4 is no longer a problem. Because if we can't take the bishop because the bishop trades itself off, we always have the e7 square then because it will be freed up. So I'm going to castle. I'm going to castle. I'm not worried about any king side attack. We always just have h6. I don't believe he has enough to muster anything up just yet. Okay, b3. So yeah, he just wants to make sure I can't take on b2. I'm, I don't think taking on b2 was good in any of those scenarios uh, that we were presented with. a5 is a potential move. I don't really want to take him, because like I said, our C pawn is going to become weak. I want him to take me. We could consider taking the bishop. But again, we can do that whenever we want. There's no rush with that. So I was just adjusting my contact lens. Um, A5. C4 would be a nice idea if we could take back with a piece. If I take back the pawn, it ruins my structure. But taking back with a piece wouldn't be bad. But we can't do that. So let's go a5. Let's go a5. And I kind of just want to see what my opponent does. Because I don't think the position is all that obvious in terms of plans for white. I feel like I have all the pressure. And taking... It can only help me, surely. It just weakens e5 and c3 becomes a target. Um, by the way, if you made it this far in the video and you're enjoying and learning, because teaching you guys is the primary goal of this channel, and you're not already subscribed, then I'd really appreciate it if you can hit the subscribe button so my videos get recommended in your feed more and I can get more views, which is obviously good for me, and you can get more education, which is obviously good for you. Um, obviously, if you're already subscribed, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. C4. C4 looks like a bit of a mistake. Now, the reason is because I think I can take... I think I can take this. And he can't take back with the pawn. So if we take... Uh, let's say knight takes. Knight takes. Queen or bishop takes. Let's say bishop takes. Then I think I have C5. Attacking the bishop, bishop moves, wherever it moves, say b2. Then we can play d4, I believe. And we have a protected passed pawn. e5 is weak. a4 is still coming. That looks great. c4 doesn't look correct. Now, if I were to take like this, then it would be bad. But taking like this, he can't take because then we'll take his bishop. This doesn't work. 
That looks good to me. That looks good to me. Now taking with the knight, you can't go c5 immediately. Because then he's going to take our knight. And then after takes... Um, then he just takes on d5 with something. And we're losing. So we'd have to trade off first. And then go c5. If he takes with the bishop. Then c5 immediately. Because if he takes with the bishop. And then we trade bishop for knight. And then go c5. I don't like the fact that knight can come to b5. So I don't want to do that. This is an idea. Like taking here. Rook takes. c5. But again I don't want the knight to go to b5. So we're just going to snap it off. We are going to snap it off. And it doesn't matter which he takes with. We're going c5. I think we're building up a bit of an advantage now. Whew, nice. Like I said, back in uh, this position, I kind of just wanted to see what my opponent would do and respond to what he does. And yeah, I think c4 was a mistake because of this intermezzo c5. And um, I don't really know where he's going to put the bishop because e3, d4 comes with tempo. Which helps us. If he goes to b2. D4. And the bishops are locked out. Uh, and moves like a4 are even more promising then. Because we have x-ray vision on the bishop. Which is undefended. So this is looking very nice. Very nice. Our bishop you can argue is a little bit passive. Sure. But I also don't need it to be conquering the world. Like, I just need it to defend. Because our pawns are going to be putting the pressure on. And our queenside pressure with our major pieces is also going to be very good. This bishop can always come into the game via, like, g5, maybe? But, okay, yep. Now, I've said in many previous videos, a pawn chain is only as strong as its base. By the way, I could have taken here, and he couldn't have taken back because I would have taken the bishop. But I don't think it was all that good. Like, if I take... I don't know. I wasn't really convinced because I'm breaking my pawn structure apart. Uh, moves like queen d7 are maybe annoying. Okay, I have rook a7 there. But, I don't know. It didn't look that good. Maybe it was. Maybe I rushed my decision a bit, but this is still incredibly scary for him. A4 still looks great. Sorry, what I was saying about the base of the uh, pawn chain is that d4 is only as strong as c5. So I can't allow b4, right? It helps that my bishop also controls that square. Rook d8 looks like it could be good just to hold on to this pawn, but we can play that at any time. Uh, A4 is calling out to me. And you might be worried about moves like a3 and b4. But if a3 is played, we just take. So that's not a problem. And we could play a3 ourselves to kick this bishop. And b4 is going to struggle to ever happen. But I feel like our play is going to come down the queen side. So I don't really want to commit to this too early. Because I might want to take on b3. All right, what is he going to do? I don't know whether I should have taken the pawn in this position. It just didn't look right, like splitting all my pawns apart like that. Okay, that's his idea. F5, is that scary? Well, if he goes F5, we're going to have to take. Queen takes... Queen e6. That looks kind of fine to me. I feel like I'm getting deja vu. I swear I've had this kind of position before. I swear I have. By the way, rook b8. Now rook a b8 is the one I want to move. Because I want to keep this rook helping in the defense of the king side. g6 is also playable to stop f5. But I was worried about g6 and g4 insisting. 
and then he's breaking more of my structure. Rook b8, he still can't take because the bishop hangs, right? I don't know how he defends this pawn a second time. Neither of these rooks can do it. And if we take taking queen takes, we're threatening a queen trade and attacking this. That looks pretty good. Let's do it. If f5, take, queen takes, I think we can probably just take on b3. Although, if f5 and we just take, is f6 concerning? Take, take, take. He's down two pawns there. I think that's okay. Hmm. So I think his point is, if we take, he's going to play something like bishop c1 to pin the pawn to my queen. He's got to be careful with that, though, because if we take and he goes bishop c1, then I think we can take. And if he takes our queen, we can promote, because the bishop will be blocking his rook's vision off. I think we need to take. We, we definitely should. Whoa. That isn't right. Surely. There's no useful discoveries. Got no checks or anything. That's a clean pawn. And he's trading. Okay, wow. Wait, I thought I could just take the rook here. And then we just win a piece. Here. Here we can even just take with check. Obviously. If we take like this. Then he wins our rook. But we can just take his rook. So. Um, that's a piece. We're up a piece ladies and gentlemen. Now how will I blunder this game. Is the question. Bishop c5 looks good. Rook e8 is a move. Trying to play bishop to f8. And he can't advance the pawn because I take it. Yeah, let's do that. I think that should be solid. He goes here. We can actually just drop the bishop back. So he can't take because bishop c5 will be a pin. So that pawn is untouchable right now. I guess it's now no longer untouchable. <laughs> um, do we have to go back? Probably. He goes something like this. Then we can go around like this. I don't really want to do that though. I don't really want to do that. Um, if rook c8, rook takes d4. Bishop here. If he moves his rook to like d7, then bishop to e4, then g3, g6, I could just, I'll just play g6 and sack this pawn, just so I don't get back ranked. Maybe I should have done that on the previous move. Bishop c5, rook c7. Bishop b4, rook d7, bishop c3. I'm worried that he starts advancing. But then I bring my king. 
think we're in time. This looks dangerous. Actually. Let's do it. I'm kind of annoyed that I I played Bishop F8 too quickly, probably. It's just I wanted to get that set up, but then D4 is a problem. Okay, he's going to bring that. So then we can just slide our king over, I think. To avoid any back ranks. Uh, G6 is, of course, playable. But I want my king to come to E8, probably. I'm going to go rook c8, just to protect the bishop, put pressure on the pawn, and I want to go king to e8, to kick this rook off of d7, because d7 is great, because it attacks this and looks at my second rank, whereas now he doesn't. Still not an easy conversion though. I kind of want to go g6 h5. He's got no way in. Yeah, he doesn't have a way in. But if I move my rook, like, then he can go rook c7, and it's a bit annoying. He could actually go rook d8 and d7. But if you go rook d8, then rook c7. Well, let's start with h5. And my idea is that I'm uh, locking these pawns on dark squares. I'm just fixing them on dark squares because then they'll be vulnerable to my bishop. So bishop e7 is a move that, you know, is quite tempting now because h4 is going to hang. I think I can start with rook d8, though. Then on this, I can do this. And if the c pawn advances, is that? Is that a problem? Don't know. Okay. If we go rook d8 and he goes rook c7, then we can push. Take, push, he can't stop me. We go rook d8, rook c7, push, king can't go here because our bishop controls that square. So rook d8, I think he has to step back. And then we can get rook d7 in. There, there, there. I don't want to allow that though. Here, here. Maybe then I can just go bishop e7. Looks simple. Can't push, so that's not a problem. And he can't defend h4. Okay, well, I'm. I feel like I'm prolonging this conversion somehow, but I don't know. I don't think I'm missing anything obvious. Rook c7 is going to impede his progress, though, because once he gets to c6, the rook's going to be in the way. Let's take. This is tempting. Is it mu Is it too much? Here, here. Yeah, then I can just go go and push. I can just push this pawn. Let's go. He moves his king. We're going to push this pawn, and he's impeding his own progress. If he plays a move like rook b7, push, c7, rook c8, rook b8, king d7. Yeah, you can win this, but then we push this. 
Okay, I mean, this isn't really scary. This isn't really scary, but we can just take it. Let's take it. It doesn't change the position uh, at all because we're still like this is the same position as this in terms of everything else going on on the board, right? Except I just have an extra pawn and this pawn. Yeah, this doesn't do anything. He's just throwing pawns at me now. Expecting a resignation. As we are up three pawns and a bishop at this point. Okay, he's going to try this, but... This is just met with this. And after rook b8, it's important we can go king d7. Yeah, d4 falls, but then we just push. Uh, if he goes for a move like rook b1... Then we can take and rook a1, bishop d6. We cover the pawn. We have two extra pawns. We have a, another rook, like, you know. Let's push. His only move to stop the pawn is rook b1. And then you just take. Okay, I don't know what that does. I'm just going to throw this check in though. Just because I can. <laughs> and I'm going to take this just to eliminate the f any threat ever. Yeah, I could have promoted. But this just means it's impossible for me to blunder, essentially. Okay. Let's go here. And then I just want to play something like rook g8 and rook g1 so that we can force a queening. I could also push another pawn, but it's easier just to get my rook involved. Going to block back mm. and maybe I will push this actually maybe I will he's not on a1 yet so we don't have to worry about the bishop not defending the pawn okay one well, we push and we push and we could probably push this pawn as well I mean there's a million ways to win here but I'm just trying to do the most risk-free thing. Okay, that doesn't threaten anything. Let's push. And we're going here. And we can't actually promote either pawn yet, but we're just getting them ready, you know. And he can never take either of them with his rook, because then the other one will promote. It's uh, a bit confusing why he's playing on, to be honest. Like, he could have taken way more time on previous moves. Now he's thinking. It's like, it's not really the time, is it? I'm going to go rook c4 just to cut this king off so that it can't help out in the defense. Not that it was really a problem anyway, but to keep things easy. Push. And now rook e4 and rook e1 will be game over. Because we're going to attack this rook and either we trade and promote or we force the rook off of the back rank. And then we can promote. Either pawn. Well, this should be an extra 5 elo added on to the rating climb series total, bringing us to 1994 ELO, um, which should put us one win away from 2000. I feel like we've been in that position a few times though. Uh, we need to actually 
convert it at some point. I think he's going for a stalemate. I think that's what he's doing, but now we have a queen. It's not going to be diff difficult to checkmate him. Okay, okay. Oh, by the way, um, for those of you who don't know yet, I have mentioned it in a previous video, but I've organized all of my videos into playlists which feature some of my favorite openings. So that includes like the Karo Khan, the Slav, the Vienna, um, the A3 Sicilian, and the B3 French. So if you want to like look at a specific opening over the course of several videos to try and get a good idea of how to play the opening, then I'd highly recommend you check out some of the playlists for the ones that you want to learn more about. Um, just to make it easier, basically. You guys to access that. That was the idea. Okay. Well, we can just take because it's not stalemate. Uh, his king has many, many moves. And, I mean, if he plays something like this, we're going to play rook g1, king moves, and we're going to promote with checkmate. Or we can do it like this. King moves, and then rook g1. Is checkmate. Okay. Well. That was a nice game. I think we played that very, very well. I don't know whether we should have taken on c4 when we had the opportunity to in this position. I don't know whether we should have taken or not. We'll see what the computer has to say. I hope you enjoyed the game. And make sure you stick around for the analysis because we're going we're to be learning a lot, I'm sure. All right. So game analysis time we have. E4, C6, D4, D5, Karo Khan. Like I said, I have videos in the exchange. I have videos in the fantasy. Uh, also in the knight C3, D2 lines. They kind of transpose because I just take regardless. So you get the same position. So, you know, something like this takes takes is the exact same as this takes takes. Uh, obviously, you don't have to take, but this is how I play the position. And I've got videos in those. But we have e5 today, which doesn't get played all that often in the rating climb, to be honest. So it's good to have one. We'll go c5 immediately. You don't have to go c5 straight away. You can play moves like bishop to f5. You can even go e6, preparing c5 with um, the bishop already defending it. But c5 is the most accurate move. My opponent goes c3. Again, you don't have to go c3. You can take. You can go knight to f3. You could even go bishop to e3 if you want. Although I don't think it's amazing after something like this. Yeah, it, it just looks a bit weird because the bishop's basically just a big pawn, you know? And if it moves, then e5 is going to be under a lot of threat. So you go c3, which is logical. Knight c6, attacking, knight f3 defending, bishop g4, attacking, bishop b5, basically defending, right? Now here it is best for white to take this, and after a move like e6, attacking c5, b4 defends the pawn, and you can't really take here straight away because of queen to a4, knight c6, and b5 with what is effectively a double attack. If you take the knight, then you take on c6. And if you try to save the bishop, then, uh, whoops, that's a rook gone. So after this line like this, I think you take the knight first. And then if queen takes, then you can take on e5. Because if bishop b5 then knight c6 and there's no b5 moves so you're fine you can go moves like queen to f6 to try and trade queens and you can argue your structure is better than white's and if you take any takes with the pawn to keep this alive i think you can still do the same thing because if queen a4 i have knight d7 which is a bit better because then b5 doesn't come and you can go knight f6 to defend that if you want. You know, push b7, knight f6, castle, get out of the way. Your equal material. But like I said, white structure is so much worse than a nice solid Karo Khan structure. 
in fact, it might be better to go g6, bishop g7, and like knight f6, or knight e7, because this is a weak looking diagonal, right? And then it also means that rook g1 won't come with an attack on g7, because the pawn will be on g6. And then like h5 to stop any h pawn advances. Anyway, anyway, we don't get this line. Uh, you can take here, and I think this is the best approach, like this. But I feel like it's very easy for white to play in this position. Like, I don't think there's that much pressure that black has. So, personally, I just like to go e6 immediately. I'm always leaving the option of this open, because... Wait, why can't you take here immediately? Oh, queen a4. I'm, I'm sure I've fallen for that before. <laughs> so you have to take on f3 first. And obviously if they take with the pawn, their, their structure's kind of ruined. And if they take with the queen, then you take. So there's no shenanigans. And again, e5 is kind of weak. It may be kind of difficult to exploit it. But black just is a very, very solid and easy position. And what more could you ask for? After e6, he castles. We go knight e7, which is apparently a bit of a mistake. So queen b6 immediately is good. And bishop takes f3 is also good. Rook c8 is also good. Now, why did I reject queen b6? Well, I wanted him to develop his bishop first, so b2 would be under attack. If takes... Taking with the queen is best. You can take with the pawn, though. I just felt I didn't have a whole lot of pressure here. Which is why I didn't go for this. Bishop e3. Knight e7. If you take, then knight f5. You're probably going to win the pawn back. b4. b6. And if you take, then black just sacks the pawn and claims he's got big compensation. <sighs> Again, it's difficult to play this. I feel like it's difficult to play this. Um, but okay, it's good to know. So in this position, queen b6 or bishop takes f3. Although I feel like you can wait for h3 before you take this. Or if we go into some forcing line where you want to stop queen a4, then you just take this beforehand. So okay, queen b6 is better here. Although rook c8 is also good, so I might play rook c8 in future. But we go knight e7, and that's bad because of this. Now, I thought that we could just go knight g6 here. Ah, then queen a4, and we have this situation again. So, if takes, we should take here first. Queen takes, knight g6. Ah, there's queen e3 defending both. So this is what I missed. And it's fine, because he missed it as well. But knight e7 is not good. Because we're blocking this bishop's defense. And he has ample time to defend it if we give him an extra move by blocking our bishop. So queen b6 here is the best. Okay. And we kind of stunt this bishop's development anyway because then we're threatening to take b2 in some scenarios. But he misses this. He goes rook e1. And we should be taking... After takes, takes, we have queen b6. And I guess we just have a lot of pressure going on in this position. Knight c3 is best. Knight f5, we have an absolute ton of pressure going on. Bishop e3. Bishop, oh, we don't even have like a immediate knockout. Something like this. We can't take, but I guess the point is that d4 is just so weak, b2 is weak, our knight's amazing. This is the best line for white. Rook c1. Queen back to b6. No, rook c8, okay. There's no... Wait, can you go here? Oh no, because that attacks the queen, what am I on about? So the knight has no useful discoveries. Let's say like knight e2, then queen b6. Yeah, you just still have a ton of pressure. Okay, well, like I said, we missed this. I go knight f5, and he's okay now. But he goes bishop e3. And now 
queen b6. So I was correct. Like, it is good when the bishop develops to bring the queen out to b6. But I could have done it earlier, and I shouldn't have blocked my own bishop in. You live and you learn. Bishop takes. B takes is correct. You can take with the queen, but it's better to take with the pawn. Knight b d2. Here we can take. And I was a bit concerned about this. The only move to hold the advantage is queen a3. This is like, what well, has a lot of counterplay. It's a lot of compensation. My queen's kind of out of the game. My bishop isn't as good anymore because the knight isn't pinned. I didn't want to go for this. So I chose bishop e7, which is perfectly fine. h3, takes, takes. This is a mistake because of queen b2. And if rook b1, then we just stop this. Rook back to a1. And we're safe on c4, I guess. Hmm. I suppose. I suppose. Maybe I should have taken on b2. But I thought castle, we still got a ton of pressure. I wasn't confident in taking the poisoned pawn. And I thought, even if it is the best move to take it, I still have a great position even if I don't. And I'd rather take it when I'm castled. Maybe I could have invested some more time into actually calculating that line, but I know I've been caught out in the past by it. So it's always a bold move to actually take the plunge. But okay, B3. Uh, we go A5, which is inaccurate. So apparently we should take. But I thought C takes and C6 is just weak. Rook f c8. Rook c1. Are we going c5? h6 is good. I don't really understand this. I just thought that c6 was a weakness. And like, yeah, we can aim for going c5, but we've already done that. I thought a5 was good because we're just preparing a4 to put pressure on. And if he takes us then I like this position anyway. Like c3 is weak, a4 is coming, our knight is amazing. d4 is a good move. But I don't really want to trade though. So knight e7. And I, I just thought this was good. I thought this was a nice position and it'd be fairly easy to play. He blunders with c4 though. And yeah, we take on d4. I explained why I did this during the game. On bishop takes, you don't do... Wait. I didn't want to do this. Because I didn't want this. And I was right in thinking that. But you actually just have bishop c5. And you can't defend this knight. And then I win f2 and then I win the exchange. So, okay. It was fine because he took with the knight anyway. Taking on e3 was apparently better. Oh, because it's the same idea. If rook takes, then bishop c5, rook d3. Rook fd8, oh, he can't defend this. Because if he goes rook d2, then we take on c4, and this is a bit of a problem. We can take anyway. Because we win the queen. That was nice. That was nice. But I kept it nice and simple. Knight takes d4. Bishop takes d4. C5. Bishop goes back. And you can take on c4. I think it's a tiny bit better than going d4. But d4 is still very good. Why did I reject this? I think I was a bit concerned about something like this. But then I just can reinforce the pawn. But even if I secure a queen trade, like, my pawns are still kind of weak. I felt like d4 was easier because we have such a clamp on the queen side and this pawn is forever going to be a problem. Queen d3, we go a4. And queen d3, like, is just odd. I thought he was going to go rook b1 to um, support this bishop. And then if we go a4, you can just move the bishop, right? Well, not there. Maybe to a1? 
take. Rook takes. Ah, it's still not easy. He's still losing material. So, maybe queen d3 immediately was good. But a4, f4 was just, I don't know, kind of strange. Again, I thought he was going to go something like this. And if we take, I thought, he wa what did I think he wanted? Something like bishop a1. But then we can just take here with the rook, actually. So he is just losing. Um, we don't go for this, we go for f4 because he's trying to create counterplay. But it's not very scary. Okay, this is a mistake. Queen b4 is better. I couldn't explain why. Like, I wanted to keep the queen around on the sixth rank anyway, so that I could support my kingside if necessary. So I went rook a b8 with the idea that if f5 is played, then I can take it. And if you take back, then I can take. And if you take back, I can take on b3, but I can also play queen e6, and I thought this was easier. Even though it's not the best, it's simple. Because we block his pawn advance, we kick his queen out. B3 is still incredibly weak. And okay, the game kind of goes on, but we should be able to convert this. Rook a b8, he goes rook a b1, we take. Taking, yeah, was odd. Like I say, bishop a1 made more sense to me to uh, do this. Now, on bishop c1, I was going to take on a2. And if you take here, then I promote because the bishop blocks the rook's defense off. But if you go bishop to a1, I can't do that. I do have to move queen a5, though, with a nice little fork. And if you take like this, I can just continue building up pressure, I suppose. But I'm not up any material. Like, positionally, I'm dominating him, sure, but I'm not up any material. Which is why this move made no sense to me. Queen takes... And if he tries to save his queen to avoid a queen trade with a move like queen e4, then c4 just hangs. If he goes to e2 to keep hold of c4, then d3 cuts him off. And if he goes to e4, I guess I just continue investing in the pawn. If he goes to a square like f1 so that d3 doesn't come with tempo, I mean, he's just still under a lot of threat. Queen a2 is a good move. This bishop's running out of squares. Can't go to c1 because we take. If it goes here, bishop h4 is best apparently. And it's just, it's just becoming incredibly difficult for white to hold on to this position. And he has no actual attack. Like, his attack doesn't exist. But he trades queens, which obviously I'm happy about. And then bishop takes d4. I'm like, what? I can just take. And the game is kind of over. He does do well with trying to cause problems, though. This is the best move? Oh, and rook d8, and the king can't get there in time. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I went rook e8, rook d7, bishop f8. He can't take because of bishop c5 pinning the rook to the king. So he goes king f1 to get out of the pin. We went to c5, and upon rook c7... What was my idea? Oh, I think I just wanted to do this. And then if he attacked me again... I can go to c3, but I was a little bit concerned about this pawn running through. I can also go to d2, which I considered attacking this pawn. g3's got to be played. And then d4 is no longer under attack, so I can play a move like rook c8 to put pressure on. And he can no longer play bishop to c7. And then I can even reroute my bishop like this if I want in the future. If he goes something like this, bishop e3, and this pawn is no longer a threat. I mean, obviously I can't take it because of back rank mate, but I can just move the king to avoid that. And my whole plan was to get the king to e8 anyway to kick the rook off of d7. Which is kind of what happens. King f8, g4, rook c8, king d3, king e8, kick the rook away. Then I decided to try and just push my kingside pawns a bit to create some problems for him, which ended up really helping, because we get bishop e7 in. Here he can't play rook c7 because we go d3, and we promote. So he has to go back to d3, bishop e7, 
c7, we take on h4, he pushes, we come back. This is a move I wanted to play, and apparently it's the best move. The king can't defend, because again I push and you can't stop me from promoting. The king needs to maintain the blockade. I was just a bit worried about this. But I guess there's nothing to worry about, because we just get this situation again, which is what happened in the game. But everything is winning. I decide just to play safe, push the pawn, gives me a couple pawns, h3, c7, rook c8, rook b8, and king d7. Now if my king was on f8 for whatever reason, then let's just move his king, then this would be a problem. Apparently I'm still, because like, the rook is pinned to the king, so I can't take on c7, right? And if I take him, he's going to promote, and my king can't get to d7 in time to protect the rook. Apparently this is still winning after this. Move like rook h8, take, take. Bishop n3 versus rook. Yeah, I guess that should be winning. If I can just keep the pawns together. But it's not easy. But we have king d7, so that's not a problem. Take. I could take on c7, absolutely, but we go h2 to force this. King e5. Five. I can promote. Maybe I should have. Apparently it's mate in five. It doesn't really matter, but I have a queen on the board. I just thought I'd keep it nice and easy by giving it a check and then just taking the pawn. Rook b1. This isn't worth evaluating too much. I will say rook c4 I think is a good move because it cuts the king off so it keeps things easy. And then rook e4, rook e1 is the idea to kick the rook off the back rank. You just got to be sure there's no stalemate. Deliver the checkmate. Nice and easy. That's the game. Thank you very much for watching. Potentially one game to go. Can we get to 2000 ELO? It's um been a bit of a longer journey than I anticipated, to be honest. But hey, as long as you guys get education from this and enjoy, that's all that matters. I'll see you in the next one.